For this tutorial, we are going to practice solving word problems involving percentages, and specifically, we are going to use proportions to solve the problem. This problem reads that a poll was conducted by a local newspaper asking if the governor was doing a good job. 6,000 people were polled. If 2,400 people said they approved of the job the governor was doing, what percent of the people polled disapproved? The first thing that we want to do is figure out what the problem is asking for. It is asking us to determine what percentage of the people polled disapproved. So the first thing that we are going to do is set up a proportion by writing a fraction bar, an equal sign, and another fraction bar. And when setting up proportions, I like to think of it in terms of a part over a whole compared to an equivalent rate of another part to another whole. And I like to automatically stick a 100 for a denominator because we know that for percentages the whole is in terms of out of 100. The next thing that we want to do is take the 6,000 here and write that for a denominator as well. Just by reading the problem, we should be able to tell that 6,000 is a total quantity because 6,000 people in all were polled. Now remember, we said we are looking for the amount of people who disapproved. This 2,400 right here does not represent the amount of people who disapproved. That actually represents the amount of people who approved of the job. So what we have to do for this numerator here is write the number of people who actually disapproved of the job. To figure this out, we can subtract 2,400 from 6,000, and that would leave us with 3,600. So what we have to do is figure out what this numerator is here, and that quantity out of 100 should be equivalent to the rate of 3,600 over 6,000. And let's just write an x in this position to represent the value that we are trying to figure out. With any two equivalent rates or a proportion, we should remember that when you cross multiply in both directions, we should come up with the exact same product. So if we were to multiply 3,600 by 100, that should be equivalent to 6,000 multiplied by whatever our x value is. And we are going to use this fact to figure out what this x value is. So the first thing that we want to do is multiply 3,600 by 100. So all we have to do is write 3,600 and then just stick a couple of extra zeros at the end because we are multiplying by 100 and that would give us 360,000. Now whatever x is, if we multiply that value by 6,000, we should also get 360,000. So to figure out what that is, we can take 360,000 and divide it by 6,000. Because whatever our quotient is up here, when we multiply it by 6,000, it will result in 360,000. Now when you are dividing two numbers together and they both end in zeros, you can cancel out an equivalent amount of zeros. So because 6,000 ends in three zeros, we can get rid of three zeros here, and we can get rid of an equivalent amount of zeros here, so we get rid of one, two, three zeros, and we can just divide 360 by six, and that would be our quantity that we are looking for. Six goes into 36 six times, and we can just write a zero here. So we would say the percentage of people who disapproved is equal to 60 percent, which means 40 percent of the people approved of the job the governor was doing. Let's try another example. This problem reads that Judy wanted to buy a dress for her school dance. She found a dress that was $65.50. She also had a store coupon for an additional 15% off. How much will the dress cost after the discount? Round to the nearest penny. The first thing that we want to do is just write our blank proportion. And then we want to figure out what units we put on the top compared to the bottom. And we want to compare our units 
as a part out of a whole. So this first quantity here, $65.50, would be written as a denominator because that is the entire cost of the dress. And on this side, we are going to write 100 because for percentages, 100 represents the entire quantity. Now it says in the problem that she had a coupon for 15% off. But the question is not asking us to figure out how much of a discount that Judy received. The problem is asking us to figure out how much will the dress actually cost after the discount. So instead of writing a 15% for this numerator, I am going to write an 85%. And the reason for this is because that represents the percentage of the entire cost of the dress that we are still, or Judy is responsible for paying. That is why it is important to figure out what the problem is asking for. Because sometimes they will ask for one thing, but the number they provide represents a different thing. In this case, they want to know the cost of the dress after the discount, but this 15% does not represent the cost of the dress. That represents the amount that you would subtract from the total cost. What we are looking for is the 85% of the dress that Judy is responsible to pay. Now what we are going to do is figure out what this quantity out of $65.50 is. And whatever quantity that is out of $65.50 will be 85% of the entire cost. So the first thing that we will do is cross multiply $65.50 by 85. So let's go off to the side here and multiply $65.50 by 85. Five times zero is zero. Five times five is 25. We carry the two. Five times five is 25 plus two is 27. And five times six is 30 plus two is 32. And then we put a zero in this place value and multiply eight by every digit on the top. Eight times zero is zero. Eight times five is 40. Carry the four. Eight times five is 40 as well, plus another four is 44. And eight times six is 48, plus four is 52. Now we add all of these digits together and this is a total of zero. This column is five. This is seven. This is six, five, and five. And in the problem, we have two numbers after the decimal point, so the same must be true in our answer below. Now, after cross-multiplying, we have to divide by the quantity that is directly diagonal from x. So we have to divide this quantity by 100. Now whenever you divide by 100, all you have to do is move your decimal point two spaces to the left. Moving any decimal point two spaces to the left will automatically make that value 100 times smaller. So we are going to take this decimal point and rewrite it in this position right here. So now we have 55.678. And the zero is unnecessary, so we can just truncate that. And what we want to do now is round to the nearest penny. Rounding to the nearest penny is really the same thing as rounding to the nearest hundredths place. And to round to the nearest hundredths place, what we do is look at the place value to its right to determine if the digit in the hundredths place stays the same or we increase it by one. If the number right next to that place value is five or larger, then this place value will go up by one. And because this is a five, we would increase this seven to an eight. So after the discount, we would say that Judy would pay a total of $55.68 for the dress. And that is how you can use proportions to solve word problems involving percentages.